OE is not discriminatory based on one of the seven protected classes. Boy, we have gotten quite a bit of this covered already, which may work out really good. We've talked about truth in advertising. That's the TILA. Fair housing issues when advertising. No advertising that violates it. You can't say, you know, men's only. You cannot say like, uh, What's the one they're having issues with right now? I think mother-in-law's quarters. Now it's a second living area. Technology, there's all kinds of stuff going on with technology. We got the electronic signature uh, it, law that allows us to use electronic signature. You've got the child protection. You know what? Those aren't even close enough for me to even come close to writing up there. So I don't want to do I can't remember the acronym, uh, which says that children have to be 13 or older to be on the internet and collect their information. That's the electronic child protection law. <clears throat> the do not call list, remember? If they call you, you've got three months to call them back. And if they are a previous client, you have 18 months to call them back. Three months if they call you seeking information. 18 months if they are a previous client. Let's talk about the association between the broker and the uh, independent contractor. Remember, I am the man, I'm going to be the managing broker. There is only one managing broker in a property or in a group, and you are going to be a broker below me, and you are going to be an independent contractor. And to be classified as an independent contractor and get a real estate commission, you must have a real estate license. You must be under an independent contractor agreement. And 90% of your income is from sales. This is the three requirements for you to be able to get a commission. Do not confuse those with the three requirements for me to earn a commission. One is I must be licensed. Two is I must be under contract with the client. And three is I must be the procuring cause of the sale. How do you like that rainbow pin? <clears throat> so I would say that these are probably candidates for some good questions. The three requirements for you guys to earn a commission from me. The three requirements for me to be entitled to a commission. I was waiting for that, Nicole. What? <laughs> you had that you had that look on your face like I want to ask a question. <laughs> I do. What was number two? 
Is that the, is, what is that? You said that a real estate very, license. That is very <laughs> poor penmanship. You must be under an independent contractor agreement okay. with the managing broker. You're going to sign a independent contractor agreement with me. All right. And in this agreement, it's going to dictate your split. Are we 50 50, 70 20, 70 30, whatever? And it's also going to say that you are not an employee. I am not going to treat you like an employee, meaning whatever you earn, I'm going to pay you all of it. You have to take care of your own taxes at the end. I'm not going to take out Social Security. I'm not going to take out FICA. I'm not going to take out state. You earn a, hunt, a grand, I give you a grand. All right. So for you to get that, you have to be licensed, which is what you're working on. You have to be under a contract with some broker. And then at the end of the year, 90% of your income has to be from sales. At the end of the year, if you've made a hundred grand, and I routinely have done this, I might say to one of you, hey, I need this database typed in uh, Excel. I'll pay you $10 an hour, you wanna do it? And you're like, you know, I got a day open next week. Yeah, I'll come in and do it. And you come in and you work 10 hours for me. So I pay you another $100. Well, if by hour, you are still considered an independent contractor because you made more than 90% of this 100 grand, you actually made 99,900 by sales and only $100 by hourly. So that means you are still considered an independent contractor because of this thing right here. All right, now let's change the story real quick. What happens if you don't sell anything and I put you to work to help me write a computer program, and I pay you a hundred bucks, at the end of the year, you have a hundred dollars, and that's 100% of what you made from me. You are now considered an employee. I would have to go back and do all the taxes and all the FICA, because a hundred percent of your income from me was hourly. That's what defines a W-2 from a 1099. A W-2 works under a system. Be here at nine, get off at five, wear the name tag, you got lunch at noon. A 1099 is all I can do is worry about your outcome. So it's saying here, if you make all your money from me based on I paid you by the hour, you are considered a W-2 person and I'm gonna to have to take out the taxes. If you make more than 90% of your income through sales, you are going to be an independent contractor. I can guarantee, I, I don't wanna guarantee, but that seems like it should be a very obvious question in there somewhere. What three, Go ahead. What if your um, little work that was done was not done per hour, but say you said, I'll pay you $100 however long it takes you. Does that change that scenario at all? As okay. long as I dictate the system. Okay. All okay. right. When I'm dictating the system, like, hey, you can only do it during the day. You can take four or five days, but you got to do it between nine and five when I'm in here. Whereas independent contractor, I can't dictate. You guys want to sell to all Hells Angels Motorcycle Club? That's cool. I can't dictate that. As long as you do 12 and you told me you do 12, 
and you say, hey, I want to sell all of them at midnight on third shift. Okay. As long as you sell 12, I don't, I can't dictate your system. That's the difference here. <clears throat> you could get unlicensed people. Remember, it's okay to have an unlicensed assistant. Unlicensed assistants just cannot do licensed required activities. So for an example, a licensed assistant cannot show properties. Let's put this over here before we start. These are things they cannot do. All right. They cannot negotiate contracts. Unlicensed cannot negotiate contracts. Can't already oh, put show homes. Cannot hold open houses. They can't telemarket. They can't design flyers unless they are supervised by a licensed person. Contracts also go with commissions. They cannot negotiate contracts or commissions. They can answer what they can do. They can give customer level service. What is customer level service? So if someone says, hey, is the house for sale? How much? Oh, it's 125,000. They can do that. Because that's just what you would normally give a customer. That is not any kind of advice or insight. That is just general information that can typically be found anywhere. There are some business rules we deal with because of the business world. My brokerage is a business, but it also deals with real estate. So as a business, I still have issues like I still pay taxes. I still have to adhere to, you know, all the rules about uh, safety and fire codes and all of that. Now, there are some business rules called the Sherman Antitrust Acts, all right? The thing that's important we need to talk about first is the word intra versus inter. Intra means within, within my company, inter, means between companies. Intra-company is legal. Inter-company is not. So when you start talking about, when you start talking about price fixing, Intra company, I can do it. Inside of my company, I can tell everybody we are only going to list for 22.5% commission. You don't like it? Don't work for me. But I cannot call other companies and get them to do the same thing. That is considered price fixing, that is a violation. Same thing with that group, boycotting. 
this actually, this term was actually just brought up about a month ago when I think CNN told other reporting reporters to not view Trump's State of the Union speech, that it was not beneficial to the public. And his attorney came out and said, you can't do that. That's group boycotting. When you guys get together for the sole purpose of excluding, you can't do that intercompany. You can do it intra-company. If CNN said, we are not going to do this, that's fine. But they can't call ABC and CBS and ESPN and all those others and go, do not do this and we'll run him out of business. That's group boycotting. That's a violation. All right. Uh, what's it called? Segmenting? Allocation. I think they call it allocation. Allocation of customers. I cannot... Tell a buddy of mine on the north side, every time you get a phone call, give them to me. And every time they call for here, I'll give them to you. Can't do it in our company. In truck company, I can say, yeah, anybody that calls from Greenfield, I'll take that call because that's where I grew up. And anybody that calls from, you know, Plainfield will give to Renee because that's where Renee grew up. So in truck company, these are all legal. It's the intercompany that you cannot do. If you are caught violating it, it could be a million dollar fine and up to 10 years in the pokey. All right, we are up to the math portion, which you would think that we have done a, a large portion of this already. So we will end up doing some more here. We have calculated loan to value. So let's just have some fun. If I got a $55,000 loan on a 90% loan to value, what was the purchase price? If I've got a $55,000 loan and I got a 90% LTV, how much was the purchase price of this property? I got to takes me more time to find my calculator on my phone than anything else. Everybody gets sixty one thousand one hundred and eleven dollars and eleven cents. Um, I did not loan over value, right? LTV okay. value I didn't. equals LTV. So my question to you was, I will ask you the value, right? So if I move that math over there and then move this over here, I have loan over the LTV equals the value. So 55,000 divided by 
Well, divided by what do we say? 90 equals 61, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. I got it. Do we need to do another one? One more, please. All right. So if I've got a 90% loan to value and the property was appraised at 155, but we agreed to only pay 150. How much is the loan amount? It was appraised. It came in. The appraisal came in really cool, high. But we agreed to buy it at seven. So I got a 90% loan to value. How much is my loan? How much was a loan or how much was the what was the value? No, how much is the loan? There's the two values. So answer A is that one. Answer B is that one. I got answer B. Answer C. Or answer D. I heard a one vote for B. There are nine people Make. on here, and I got one vote. I got one. I got one thirty-five too. One thirty-five two. I don't even see that up. No, there. one one thirty five also. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> That's an old uh, Abbott and Costello, where he divides the money and goes here. I'll give you thirty, and I'll take thirty two. And he's like, "What? Well, you got thirty two? How could you get thirty two? That's a whole routine with Abbott and Costello. The answer is one thirty five. Which one of those values do you use in this scenario? The sales price. The sales price, because it was the lowest of the two, remember? Loan to value is the value is either the appraised value or the sales price, whichever is the lower of the two. Now, in a scenario where we could change this around and I if this came in at like this now you would use the appraised value even if you've agreed on this sales price you would take the 90% of 145 what is that 130 500 My guess. Yeah, that's what it is. Discount points. If I'm buying a house that is four hundred and fifty thousand on a conventional loan, and I got to pay two loan origination points. How much am I paying? Two percent. 
sales price is 450 with a conventional loan and I'm paying two loan origination points, how much am I paying? Be 9,000. 200. So we have an answer of 9,200. 7,200. Oh, I'm sorry. It was 9,000. Isn't that what you said? 9,000. Yeah. And we have one 7,200. I got this. Loan origination points are based on what? The loan. So 450 was the sales price. Conventional is a 0 0.80 loan to value. This is going to oh, yeah. give you 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 40, 32, 36. Your loan amount is $360,000. 2% of that is 7,200. Do not get fooled on this. Points are the percentage of the loan, not the sales price. That looks like a Christmas screen, red and green. 2% of the sales price. Well, how much would it be if I had to pay two discount points? The same, right? Exactly. Kind of a trick question because discount points are calculated the same way. It's still a percentage of the loan. So it's two discount points is still 7,200 bucks. Two loan origination fees is also because they're both calculated off of the loan amount. 2% of the loan, 2% of the loan. So in theory, I could just go two plus two is four and do 4% of the loan, which is 7,200 plus 7,200 is 14,400. Works out the same way. We know what equity is, right? Equity represents the amount of loan that has already been paid off. If that's the value of your property, here's the loan amount. This is the value right there. And there's the this portion right here, which represents that, is defined as equity. It represents the amount of the loan that has already been paid off. And every time you make a house payment, you pay a little more principal and your loan balance goes down and your loan balance goes down and it just keeps going down as you pay that loan off. Down payment and amount to be financed. This is kind of what we were talking about. If I had an 80% loan to value, my equity is 20%. That would be the down, that's the loan. Together, you'd add that 100% would be the value. We did property tax calculations. Remember we did the, this was the assessed value times the equalization factor times the tax rate. We did prorations. The one I wanna look at right now, and I, maybe we haven't done it, maybe we should, just so that we can say we've done it. I keep hitting that too darn low. If the house sells for 250 at a 6% commission, 